Sure. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Lincoln Humes, an Australian actor who I've yet to meet, but are now about to. Uh, hello, mate. Thank you for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. Hi. Uh, also, you're now part of a novel. You're on the cover of John Ibrahim's novel. They've re-released it with your face on it. Um, how is that? Well, uh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. That's and terrifying. <laughs> I don't know well, my face anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't need to be, but yeah. You're on the cover of a bestseller. Yes, it has been republished with you on front and center. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I, I should tell my mum. <laughs> um, was it a tricky audition process to get the role? Um, or were you handpicked? Did the producers come to you? Um, look, it was it was quite a complicated, unique process. There was years ago I'd read the memoir and um being Lebanese Australian, there was some there was some things like lines that were crossed in a good way. And I reached out to the producers for a meeting last year. Um, because when I read the memoir, I was like, oh, this is a story that I would love to tell and I think I could do it justice. Um, and then I met with John and I met with Mark, the producer, and um there was a lot of different stages and then yeah there was an audition process and essentially when we were pitching like each other's vision of the yeah. things, a lot of the the same kind of uh key points were aligned so it just felt like a good kind of marriage of all the same interests and um yeah and, and this came about um the last king of the cross has been an immediate success I think anyway, a lot of people have been talking about it and anticipating week after week, the new episodes. Has it changed anything? Are you getting more roles offered to you now or uh, recognised maybe? Uh, look, I, I look quite different in the show. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, so in terms of getting recognised, that doesn't really happen that much. But uh, for me, because I've been doing this half my life now, you kind of, I guess the the merit of success for me is just longevity. Yeah. I want to keep doing roles that are, are really different and and to be unrecognizable. So in some ways to hear I, I've I was sitting next to um a group the other day at this cafe and they were talking about the show. Yeah. I was sitting right next to them <laughs> and they were saying how much they enjoyed it just to each other and yeah. just to have that kind of objective uh I guess approval. Uh, was really lovely but for me I, I the 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 most uh, joy comes from doing it like mm. I just love I love the whole process and then you know when it comes out there's there's if if people enjoy it then that's an added bonus but for me I just love doing the acting thing you know did um at any point do you did you stay in character and, and walk around the cross as John <laughs> well, we were we were quite far out from the cross because they built the entire cross to scale out west. All right, um, yeah. And we were filming until about four or five a.m. So I think if I stayed in character and then drove to the cross, I would have been quite tired. Um, but I did, I did, you know, I would walk through the cross um, after we'd wrapped and just kind of take it in and see what the energy is like. And um, it was quite unique. I, I got a train the other day and. We stopped the King's Cross and there were just all the, the yeah. posters for the show there. And I was like, this is a funny moment. Yeah. Did you take some photos while you were there on the train? No, uh, I just kind of I just kind of enjoyed the the moment, to be honest. It's just so unique and um, you know, it doesn't always happen. And so I just kind of sat there and just went, ah, oh, this is this is hilarious. I find it hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it's, you, you're fashionable anyway. You, you're always a good dresser and you seem oh, to be, you know, you pretty too. classy. I got the I <laughs> you're, you're a classy man. Thank um, you. What about in the show? Like, were you like, just did you become John when you got into some of those suits and some of those outfits? Because you're pretty, pretty solid in the, in the wardrobe department, I think. Yeah, they, I mean, the wardrobe was really interesting because what I wanted to, uh, Push from the start was that because he doesn't come from money no both the character and the person he doesn't come from a wealth of experience in that world and how to be a good businessman like it's all self-learned and self-taught yeah and so there needed to be that kind of uh demarcation between 
being young into an up and comer into an established into kind of you know the prolific businessman that he is sure um so the wardrobe did help that and the fashion back then was quite um <laughs> amazing so yes he, he's quite a understated dresser um but there would be little little things we could finesse where you know he's always in jeans and a shirt and a suit and it was just about tailoring in the suit as he gets more uh, established and um and then branching out with things like you know the leather jacket and whatnot depending on what he was doing but he's he's a very much a like steve jobs he's quite simple in what, how he dresses yeah okay no that that's fair um i think that john's smarter than he looks at times um was he by your side a lot of the times on set you know giving you little things what to do and, and maybe what not to do um no, he sort of he, hands off no we i mean we we chatted a lot beforehand and during the process and um you know had a lot of discussions about i guess the arc of the character and for me yeah. at the end of the day i'm like this is what i do and nightclubs and nightlife is what you do and we kind of respected each other with that and yeah. he would you know we'd have lengthy conversations about things but at the end of the day he would defer to me because it, it's you know if you're going to trust someone with a story you need to leave them to do it which he did so yeah at the end of the day i was like it's going to be mutually beneficial if we both stay in our lanes you know i mean i mean the world is now you know a lot more politically correct compared to the last King of the Cross era. Uh, is that for the better? I mean, do you think John would get away with what he got away with now? No, but no. I think I think it's really important with shows like this to not make it revisionist. Like yeah. you can't you can't change history so much that it it redefines how it was for people back then because then you it's like you're gaslighting experiences for people that were born in that generation. Yeah. It, there was a lot of problematic um, kind of uh, morals and ethics back then, um, but you only know that because of how far we've come now and looking back on it. So I think it's really important that you have that clear divide of what was and what is now so you can see how far we've come in a, in a better way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also fascinating. I mean, humans are flawed and constantly evolving and currency is constantly evolving because back then it wasn't yeah that money was a currency which we still understand now but information and notoriety and and those kind of things were were sure. premium currency uh which now it's kind of you know shifted a bit <laughs> so uh you as lincoln you're not going to quit acting and go and buy a nightclub as, oh, a, God, no. as a business oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm a, like in bed by eleven. I, don't know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't stay up till five a.m. trying to kick people out of things. No. Nah. Uh, a couple more um, questions before we wrap up. Um, anyone in your co, you know, your co-stars, your, your ensemble that you wanted to highlight that you really enjoyed working with or were impressed with? Oh, look, uh, not to be diplomatic, but I was impressed by everyone. Like we were so lucky with the caliber of cast that we had, especially like you. You're only as good as the other parts that you're working with. Like yeah. the show can only be so good without everyone rising to that level or elevating something. But I mean, just off the top of my head, obviously Claude, um, who played Sam, was phenomenal yeah. to spar with. Um, Uli Latukathu, um, who plays Tom and Sam, was just brilliant and brought this wonderful kind of vibrant character, which could have been quite, you know, stiff on screen um <laughs> yeah. but then obviously we've got you know callum mulvey and matt nabel and so many others that... well matt's a veteran and he just he'd be you'd be learning off him i think yeah, I, 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 and, I try yeah. and learn from everyone i work with you know yeah. everyone brings a different kind of set of skills and so really at the end of the day <clears throat> a production shines when you can lean into people's um unique special qualities and i think for the most part, we we managed to do that on the show. Tim Roth, amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, what is it about Australian and crime? I mean, we make some really heavy duty crime films and most of it's from actual stories. Like, 
what what do you think that is and is it just a never-ending story of things that go through the cracks when it comes to illegal activities i think i look i think it's a fascination worldwide um i think yeah. Australia's quite a you know small continent um and our industry is so small here <laughs> that it does feel like there's a there's a bigger percentage of crime stories which there is but i think the fascination comes from um wanting to dip your toe into that other side of yourself and the shadow and the edge and the what if without having to commit to it and suffer the consequences. Yeah. Um, and I do think that we have a fairly tattered history in this country. So I think there is in our kind of DNA, there is a, there's an experience and a, and an interest and curiosity as to, you know, corruption and, the the grayness in terms of morality and and the way society works but i think there's always um merit to explore both sides of humans the and good not, and the bad the good and bad and and not especially for what i do if you're playing let's say a villainous character or i'd say like an anti-hero which the character of johnny is yeah um, you could say that you need to not judge them, but try and understand them. And so I think at the end of the day, the interest with crime stories deep down is our just like human condition to understand. Mm. Well, it was a good book. It's an even better series. I think Paramount Plus are on a winner. Uh, oh, what's up next for you? Is there any more uh, return as John or are you uh, on some other projects coming up you can share? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we get another season. Um, I, I I won't know that for a little bit, but um, there's a show I did with a few friends of mine and Sean Penn called Court, which yes. is a dark comedy, which we finished at the end of last year, which comes out later in the year. Um, and then I did another comedy called Gold Diggers. But at the moment, I'm creating and developing my own project, which um, will hopefully get off the ground later this year. So there's a few things going on. Good luck, Lincoln. Great to meet you, mate. Absolutely. And uh, congratulations on, on what, I mean, I reviewed it and I kept getting response from listeners on the radio and, and hosts I was talking to. Oh, I didn't think it'd be that good. So I've talked them into watching it and they've all come back to me and said how great it is and singled you out alongside uh, Tim. So that oh, I really appreciate bad. you doing that, man. Thank you. I'll, I'll get Paramount to send you a, <laughs> a kind of amount so you can keep doing it. A signed poster is all I'd ask for. Signed poster? Yeah. yeah. I'll sign face off for you. That's fine. <laughs> Take care, mate. Great to talk Thank to you. you and all the best in the future. I hope we cross paths. I hope so too. Thank you so much. Cheers.